So take out your notes on birth duty and income tax investigation. So what do we mean by back duty? Now, back duty is a term used to refer to the assessment and correction of taxes in arrears. Yeah, when someone is under tax investigation, it's not necessary that, uh, that it'll take for that period. Eh? They can also backdate them, eh? for example, for the last five years, that's the maximum they can go. Eh? So tax arrears may arise due to the foreign circumstances. And most of the tax investigation they are done when the revenue authority they have suspicion that you have not been declaring the correct tax income or there is some taxes you have not yet or have been evading uh, tax. So saying that, but duty is a term used to refer to the assessment and correction of taxes in areas. Now, tax areas may arise under the following circumstances. Number one, non-declaration of income. There is income you earn, but you never declared. Then number two, overstating the expenses. You know what happens when you overstate the expenses? You have said the expenses. That means your income will, the taxable income will reduce. And if the taxable income reduces, that means you pay less tax. Also, number three, under declaration of income, I hear you declare, but not the actual amount. Eh? And then also claiming relief and expenses, which one is not entitled to. Now, the objective of tax investigation is to establish whether, number one, there was a gross negligence on the part of taxpayer. And then number two, where there's a fraud on the part of the taxpayer. Yeah, so what are some of the sources of information that the commissioner can lie when it's meeting the tax liability? When you're a tax investigation, we have various methods that the commissioner or the tax investigative department, they can use to gather that information. Where do they get this information? Number one, the taxpayer making confession and disclosure. Now that one cannot happen in Africa. Eh? Yeah. Though it can happen, eh? yeah, you know, there is some question you can be asked. Eh? In the process of answering them, you crucify yourself. Yourself. Yeah, making this crucial. Eh? But that was not your intention. Eh? It's only that they ask some question. You know, they have their investigative techniques. Mm -hmm. eh? Yeah. Then number two, also informal from the income tax investigation department. Yeah, sometimes they act as a customer, as a friend, as a business partner. Eh? Then from there, they gather information. Also another one, the media. Another one is the government uh, corporation and department, such as what? Are those government departments? Yeah. Okay, this is the key. Yeah, what about EACC? EACC, eh? Yeah, for them, they are concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ethics and anti corruption, eh? Yeah, so whenever you understand something, eh? They also, there is a, actually a lot of investigation they usually do. What about the asset recovery unit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they look at the flow of the assets, the flow of cash flow, then start investigating. They even look up to your, KRIP, eh? have you been paying tax? No, they inform another department. Then that department, another department. Eh? Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah? Also, another one is the use of PIN number. Also, other business 
partners. Yeah, your business partner also can crucify you. Eh? Also, customer and suppliers, taxpayer lifestyle. Yeah, that's why they conduct lifestyle audit. Eh? Yeah, you are employed somewhere, you're earning 20,000, but how you are living? No, there is no coordination. There is no coordination. Yeah. And then also, your friends can crucify you, as well as when they become enemies, as well as your relatives, if you don't support them, right? Uh, so how do we determine the income now a determination of income actually this is also the formula that is used to determine the net worth when you hear that someone is for example when there was a time politician they were declaring their wealth eh? how do they determine their wealth that i'm worth this when someone is worth for example 100 million what does it entail what was formula do they use now this is how they determine the so we look at determination. Income. That's on an individual basis. And then what happens? Whenever you're a tax investigation or when you're declaring your wealth, you don't just take the personal asset you own, no. If you have a company, the company's assets and liability, your personal assets and liability, they'll be combined. So, and they use the normal formula. Eh? How do we get capital? Is asset minus liability, of which capital is the same as net asset. And your net asset becomes your net worth. Yeah, when someone is worth 100 million, that one does not necessarily mean that your total, total asset is 100. No, it's asset minus liability. Liability, that's how you determine the net worth of a person. So in this case, when determining now the income of a person, this is how they determine. First of all, they'll take all the assets of an individual, be it private or for the business, <laughs> then you raise liabilities. All the liability for the business and for the private assets. Then, and that's why whenever there is a scandal and someone is being linked, they usually disclose that that company is owned by someone. If it's a politician, it will be called by the parliament to be asked. Eh? But you see in company law, you see that there is a separate legal identity between a company and the person. But whenever someone is at a tax investigation, that does not apply. If it was organization, you're one of the director, it will be answerable. So that's how they determine the network. Eh? Assets minus liabilities, and that's how now you get the capital or the network. Once they determine the network, they're saying that in this case, it's all about back duty. They are comparing some years. For example, 2020, 2021, 2022. Once you determine the capital, then you determine the growth from one period to another. For example, in 2020, let's assume your net asset was 8 million. In 2021, it was 90 million. That means within one year, you generated a wealth of 10 million. This 10 million, how much do you pay as tax? So that's what for the tax department they are concerned about. Eh? So you determine the growth, that's the fourth step. Once you determine the growth or the changes, that one becomes to be your income. That one becomes to be your income. And that's what now they assess to determine whether you, uh, you filed the correct tax. Yeah. So now let's look at determination of income. This uses uh, the principle of capital computation. And to determine the individual capital or wealth, one requires to apply the accounting equation. That is capital, you take the assets minus liability. A, a capital statement is used in estimating the taxable income and it shall be prepared as follows. That applies to an individual. One, you are certain all the assets of the, uh, the taxpayer, whether private or for business, or the assets. Then number two, you are certain all liabilities of the taxpayer, whether private or personal, our business. Then number three, you determine the net capital or wealth of the person by determining the difference between step one and step two. That's the asset minus liability. Then number four, you compute the growth of the net worth by comparing the net worth at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period. Now that growth will be regarded now as your income. Can you write in bracket income? Yeah, step number four in bracket is your income. So 
Then number five, once you determine now your income, now you do some adjustment to your income. You add all desirable deduct uh, deductions such as living and personal expenses, including drawings. If you have taken some goods from your business, some cash from the business is regarded as part of the drawing. So you add back all the desirable expenses such as living expenses, personal expenses, including any forms of drawings. Then you raise, you deduct non-taxable incomes. Yeah, non-taxable income such as what? Inheritance. Maybe you had inherited something from maybe your parents. Eh? Yeah, so in that case, you eliminate. Also, you're saying that you eliminate non-taxable income and income whose withholding tax is final, right in bracket, which are those incomes which withholding tax is final. Interest, interest, and dividend from companies, and dividends from companies, and dividends from companies. Yeah, but if you received any dividend from the circle or cooperatives, uh, those are what you call non qualifying dividend. So that one withholding tax is 15%, which is not final. So in this case, we are only deducting the income, uh, the non taxable income, and incomes whose withholding tax is final, such as interest, as well as uh, dividend from companies. Then, number seven, you deduct allowable expenses never deducted, e.g., capital allowances. Correct, Adika Evo. E.g., capital allowances and mortgage interest. Capital allowances and mortgage interest with a restricted amount, with a restricted amount, with a, rest a restricted amount of 300,000 per annum. Yeah, mortgage used to be 150. The maximum amount you can claim for mortgage, eh? for any private asset, I mean for mortgage asset. Eh? So if you are paying an interest of, for example, 400,000, you cannot claim the 400. The maximum you can claim is 300? 300, good. Ah, yeah. So now take out your past paper, open with me. June 2011, question 3B. June 2011, question 3B. June 2011, question 3B. You can also use your notes. I've already indicated the question there. And also use your notes. So you're told that Makosa Maingi has not been maintaining proper books of account since the inception of the business in the year 2007. The following balances were obtained from the available business record for the four year period ended that first of December 2010. So we have all that. Then you are told that capital allowance were agreed at the total of 76,000 for the four year period. You see, but duty is all about past years. Eh? When you have an investigation, they don't just investigate one year. So in this case, they are conducting an investigation for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Required, estimate the accumulated taxable income of Makosa Maingi for the four year period ended that first of December, 2010. So how do you determine that? You prepare the capital statement, so Makosa Maingi, capital statement for the year. So here we had 207, 208, 209, 2010. 
So you say that. How do you determine the taxable income? Step number one, you'll take the total asset, both private and the business. Then you raise total liability, private and for business. And that's how you get the net. Once you get the net worth, now you determine the income. How do you get the income? Get the income, the growth in net worth. Now that growth will be uh, now be regarded as your income. Now, once you get the income, you adjust by adding back any desirable expenses and uh, including drawings. Then you deduct any non-taxable income and because withholding tax is final. And then you can also raise any allowable expenses never deducted, such as capital allowance. So let's go to, your, uh, to year 207. Now, can you add all the total assets? Add all the assets. I'm sure you know what's an asset, what's a liability. Just add the total assets. How much are you getting as the total assets? Yeah, it should be 16 to 80. Yeah, so now let's use them. So leasehold property is an asset. Motor vehicle is an asset. Furniture is an asset. Bank of draft is a liability. Loss on sale of investment, that's an expense. So it affects the income statement. Eh? And loss on sale of investment, that one becomes a desirable expense. Yeah, because again, disposal of an asset is not taxable, then untaxable income. So therefore, if you dispose it at a loss, that it will not be allowable. Then data is an asset. Mortgage loan, it's a liability. Stock, it's an asset. Computer, it's an asset. Bank account is an asset. Foreign exchange losses, that's an expense which is allowable. Good. So that's how we determine the assets and the liability. Now, can you add the total liabilities for 207? Mm -hmm. Add the total liabilities for 207. You get an amount of 1140. Good. So therefore, it should get 15140. And that's how you get the net worth. Now, once you get the net worth, now we want to determine, in this case, we are not concerned about the net worth. We want to determine the taxable income. Now, 207 will be dash. From 207 to 208, from 15140 to 11708, did we have increase or reduce? Hey, can the rest be here? This is what we are solving. Eh? From 15 to 11708, that's a reduction by how much? That's four? That's two. That's a loss. Uh -huh. From 11708 to 189, that's two. That's an increase. So there was an income, an amount of how much? Seventy-two twenty-four. From eighteen nine, that's two to sixteen. That's a reduction. A reduction by how much? Twenty-seven So that's the growth in network, which will be regarded as an income. Now, once you get the income, then you can add any desirable expenses such as living and personal expenses now in their financial state there is something they had recorded loss on sale of inve investment that's a desirable expense so you add back eh? loss on sale of investment so it was to wait an amount of 84 also in 2010, an amount of one cent. Then you raise any non-taxable income, we didn't have any. Also you raise allowable expenses never deducted. So first of all, 
give me now the taxable income. What about this? You get 33. You just take this, the income, then you adjust. Okay, give me this then. So this one will get that 348, which is negative, and this one will get an amount of 26, 12, which is a negative. So we get the total taxable income. Now add for me for the three years. You have 1264. Then you can less. Mm -hmm. So you are told that capital allowances were agreed at a total of 76 for the four year period, not for each year. If it was for each year, you could have adjusted for each year. But in this case, we are told that for the four years, the total were agreed at 76. So you net it against now the total taxable income. So you raise the capital allowance which is an amount of 76. And that's how you get the adjusted taxable income. You get an amount of how much? 11? So that's how you determine the taxable income. And that's why another one open with me November 2015, question 5C. November 2015, November 2015, question 5C. So you're told that Amos Akinda, a businessman, is facing tax investigation by the Revenue Authority, which suspects that he has been under declaring income for the four years from the year 2011 to year 2014. You are the head of the team from the Revenue Authority conducting an investigation of Amos Akinda. He has submitted to your team record of his private and business assets and reliability from 1st of January 2011 uh, to that 1st of December 2014 as shown below. So you have all that. Additional information, number one. The cash balance on that 1st of December 2012 includes 600 inherited from a relative on that year of August uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. Number two, his living expenses for each of the four years were as follows. So I'm given the living expenses from 2011 to 2014. Number three, interest on mortgage is at the rate of 15% per annum. And then there was no disposal of non-current assets during the period under investigation. Required. Taxable income of Amos Akinda for each of the four years ended that first uh, December 2011 to 2014. You ignore capital allowances. Ah. Or, 
2011 at the beginning. Now, can you add for me the total assets? Add for me the total assets. How much is the total asset? One of four. One of four, one ninety. This one will be one twenty two. Seven forty. I've won that eight. Eight forty. I've won that two. 90 of 140, Also add for me the total liabilities for 2011. <laughs> Mas your total liabilities? So now let's see those assets and liability. You can see others are still uh, staring. Yeah. Uh, we have factory premises, that's an asset. Planted machinery, it's an asset. A motor vehicle, it's an asset. Inventory, it's an asset. Trade receivable is an asset. Private resident is an asset. Trade payable is a liability. Bank loan is a liability. Loan from a friend is a liability. Mortgage loan is a liability. Cash balance is an asset. Good. So now let's get the net asset. Can get the net asset. Mm -hmm. What do you have here? So here you get 81. For that, you get 95.08. You get 111. By that, you get 108.710. You get 114.10. So that's the net asset or the well, the net well. So now let's determine the group. So at the beginning of 2011 is dash. Now wealth grew, uh, grew from 81 for 30 to 95.08. An increase by how much? Sorry? 13.650. From 95.08 to 111.530. 16? 16.450. From 111 to 108, that's a reduction. Twenty-eight, twenty. That's a negative. One weight to one fourteen. That's an increase. What? 
5,500. That's how we determine the growth in net asset, which will be regarded now as our income. Then we add, once you get the income, you add desirable expenses, such as living expenses. Yeah, so in that case, note number two, in note number two, I told that his living expenses for each of the four year were as follows. So you have living expenses. Year 2012, sorry, year 2011 was an amount of 85. Yeah, we had an amount of 140, 90, 165. And we add back all the desirable expenses. Then you raise non taxable income. For non taxable income, there was inheritance. They have been told that, note number one, the balance, uh, the cash balance on that 1st October 2012 includes 600 inherited from a relative on 30th of August 2012. So 600 2012. So that means in this assets, when determining the total assets for the cash, there is an amount of 600 which was already included. So you may remove it. Then you also raise, Arable expenses never deducted, such as mortgage interest. Mortgage interest. So we have the mortgage. How much was the value of the mortgage? How much was the value of the mortgage? That seven eighty. So that seven eighty at the rate of fifteen percent. So fifteen percent of uh, that seven eighty is an amount of. 560? Yeah, 567, correct. But you see that for the mortgage interest will be restricted to a maximum of 300. Yeah, that's the maximum uh, you can claim. Eh? So from your notes, you'll change that. Can you go back to your notes? From your notes, it's 150. It used to be 150 or 12,500 per month, but now has been increased to 25,000. But from your notes, you can change that. But the mortgage interest should be around at 300. And that's how we determine the taxable income. Now let's determine that for each year. This one is 13485 4 by 5 Sorry? That that And that's a return in that. So you can look at that for one minute.
November 2017, question 4B. Peter Chawawa started a retail business on 1st of January 2011. He has not been filing income tax return for the six years to that 1st of December 2016. An investigation to his affairs revealed the following. So the balance sheet on the retail business as of that 1st of December 2011 was shown below. So we are given the assets, there was premises, Furnitures and fittings. There was also motor vehicle. Current assets, we have stock, we have debt, we have bank balance. Then we have cash in hand. Then we have the total assets. Uh -huh. Then we have the capital, the net profit for the year, drawings, mortgage loan. Then we have creditors. Number two, he constructed an extension to the premises in the year 2015 at a cost of 625,000. Yeah, that's a capital expenditure. Cost to extend, that's a capital expenditure. You need to capitalize to the cost of that asset, to the value of that asset. Number three, the following account balances outstanding in the respective years are shown below. Number four, withdrew goods worth 5,000 per annum from the business for his personal use. Number five, the principal repayment of each mortgage loan amounted to 50,000 per annum from that 1st of December, 2012. The mortgage interest paid in each of the four years ended that 1st December, 2012, 13, 14, and 15, amounted to 175, 50, and 25 respectively. His wife opened a saving account in the commercial bank in the year 2012. Yeah, also your wife. Wealth will be considered to be your wealth. Eh? Yeah, his wife opened a savings account in a commercial bank in the year 2012. The balance in his account after creating the interest and was follows. So we have the savings account amount. Uh, then we have the interest and number seven, his living expenses and wear and tear allowances were agreed with the revenue authority as follows. Required. Compute the annual taxable income of Peter Chawawa from the year 2012 to 2016. So now let's start with the assets. Now, for the asset in this case, we have to determine individually. So, from the balance sheet, we have premises. How much was the value of the premises? Yeah, premises was 2,000. 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. Let's go to note number one. Ah, sorry, number two, note number two. He constructed an extension to the premises in the year 2015 at a cost of 625. Mm -hmm. That was an uncurrent asset. Then it was furniture and fittings. Uh, you take its real value and then you claim we enter it. Huh? And a thousand.
Then you also had motor vehicle. Five hundred. Then you go to the current assets. In the current assets we have stock. Stock we had an amount of two fifty, but these are current assets. That means they keep on changing in every year. Note number three: the following account balances outstanding in the respective years are shown below. So stock for 2012 was an amount of 255. Yeah, we had an amount of 302.5 and 302.5. We have 366 and then we have 42.5. We also had debtors. 2011 was an amount of 160. Note number three. For 2012, was an amount of 173. Uh, we also had 190, 208, 30.5, and then 253. Then there was bank balance. Bank balance, we had an amount of 81. Then note number three, we have 109, 194. Hmm? Yeah, 194, we have 281. We have 409.5. And then we have 32, it's negative. Then there was cash in hand. For the cash in hand, 2011, we had nine. And then we have 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And then note number six, his wife opened a savings account in commercial bank in the year 2012. A savings account is part of cash and cash equivalent. Savings account, he opened in 2012. And the savings account here we had is 300. We have 900, we have 100, 725, then 750. I think we have all the assets. So give me the total assets. And kindly, can you distribute that? Eh? Don't just wait for the others to compute for you. And you know how to use a calculator. Interest has never been an in, has never been an asset. Eh? Yes. Interest affects the income statement. 2016. 0.5. Huh? 2011 is 4,000. Yes. Sorry? Then we did add the liabilities. For liabilities, we had mortgage loan. So mortgage loan, we had an amount of a thousand. Uh, note number five. The principal repayment on each mortgage loan amounted to 250 per annum from that 1st of December, 2012. So the balance will be 750, 500, 250, 
dash dash. Then we have creditors. Creditors, we had an amount of 200. Then note number three, we have the other creditors. We have 230. We have 241. We have 253. We have 272. And we have 291.5. Good. Uh, then did we have any other liability? I don't think we had any other liability. So now give me the total liabilities. So now let's get the net assets or the net wealth. So to get the net assets, so you can call the total asset A, total liabilities B. So to get the net asset, you take A minus B. Sorry? 2014. 28.5. Sorry? 3367. Uh -huh. 17. 43.55.5. Uh -huh. 43.55.5. 55? So once we have the net asset, yes? Sorry, you're supposed to take? 570? I think it's okay the way it is, eh? Yeah, just look, just check. So you can see your figures are in thousand, right? And then you are paying how much per year? I think it's okay the way it is. Eh? Mm -hmm. Just check. All the figures are in thousand. Eh? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. So now let's determine the growth in net assets. And that one will be regarded as our income. So that dash from 28 to that three, you have 567. That 367 to 43, 55.5. Nine? 988.5. 43, 55.5 to that nine, that's a reduction. Sorry? 127. 427. From that 9 to 55. to 52.17. Sorry? 377. So now we have our growth in net asset, which will be regarded as our income. Then from there, we can add non-taxable income. So not non-taxable, but desirable expenses, including drawings, including drawings. Let's start with the drawings. I will say that you add back desirable expenses, such as living expenses, personal expenses, including drawings. Note number two here to that. He withdrew goods worth 5,000 per annum for the, from the business for the personal use. So five, 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 five. Then you also add the personal expenses. Let's go to note number seven. He's living expenses and wear and tear. So there was living expenses. That's from 2012. 
300, 400, 450, 500, and 600. Mm -hmm. I think that's what, uh, what we have for the desirable expenses. Then you raise non taxable income and incomes whose withholding tax is final, such as interest. So, in this case, we didn't have inheritance, but we have interest. Eh? Income whose withholding tax is final. So, we have interest, income, yeah, for the wife. Let's do that note number six. His wife opened savings account on commercial bank in year 2012. The balances in his account after creating the interest and was followed. So that means when you're determining these savings, they have already included the interest. So we eliminate that interest because the holding tax is final. So to only be taxed at the source. So the interest for 2012, now including this, was 25. Here we had 75. Yeah, we had 90. Yeah, we had 70. Yeah, we have 60. Also, you raise allowable expenses, never deducted, such as wear and tear. Wear and tear. And for wear and tear, note number seven, 2012, 155.5. Also, here yeah, we had 130.5. We had 109, so there was 73, and then there was 157. You also raise other arable expenses such as mortgage interest. Mortgage interest, but now with a restriction of 300,000 per annum. And note number five, the principal repayment of each mortgage loan amounted to 50,000 per annum from that first of December 2012. The mortgage interest paid in each of the four year ended that first December 2012, 13, 14, 15, amounted to 100. So from 2012 was an amount of 100. 2013, 75, 50. And lastly, you paid an amount of 25. And that's how you get now you are taxable incomes. I think we have factored everything. Good. So you can look at that for a few minutes. Yes? Sorry? 2011. There was no drawing in 2011. You see, now let's be here. When you're determining the income, 2011, the net worth we had of 28, you have to determine the growth. That's when December for the first period is always done. Once you get the growth uh, net, uh, net worth, so you only adjust for the other years. If there is nothing, you'll be adjusting here. So, so the first period is always used to be used as PO. The word at the beginning, at the end. Then you look at the change for the year from there. Eh? Because you see, if you had to add back five here and others, but you see there was no income, eh? yeah, because we just determined the growth. Even if you look at the question we did previously, there was 20 level, another 20 level, but this was January, this was December. So once you get the net worth, the first period is always a dash. The growth now you determine at the end. Yes. Then after all, it's the same thing. Okay. Yeah, this bank over there, it's not a mass that you have put it here. So usually it's a negative, right? Yeah, it's a cash balance, but it's a negative. Good. So we take a small break and then we come and look at ant avoidance missions and avoidance measures.
So now let's look at anti avoidance measures. Yeah, we have what you call the tax evasion and we have the tax avoidance. The two are totally different. Huh? Now, tax avoidance, these are it's a legal way of minimizing your tax liability. While tax evasion is a legal way of not paying the correct tax. Yeah, so we're looking at an avoidance measure. Uh, so tax avoidance is more of the tax planning where you try to do all the means to minimize your tax liability but not conflicting with the rule but for tax evasion it's an illegal thing it's a fraud it's part of uh, it's a kind of fraud where you fail to pay the correct tax liability or you fail to pay at all they are two totally different so now if tax avoidance is illegal mm, that means a company and entity can exercise that minimizing your tax liability. Well, the government gets some revenue. If you do all the best you can to cut on your costs. So how the government get some revenue? So in that case, they came up with some measures to try to curb that so that at least they can be able to draw at maximum tax they can get mostly from the company. And that's what you call the anti-government and avoidance measure. All the measures taken to minimize the tax liability by legal means. Now, these are rules introduced by the tax authority to combat the avoidance of tax. So, what is tax avoidance? It's a deliberate legal measure. Can you understand the word legal? Yeah, it's a deliberate legal measure taken by the taxpayer to minimize tax liability. In this case, the taxpayer does not conflict with the rule. And the taxpayer uses exemption under the rule and does not challenge the legality of the tax rule. Then we have tax evasion on the other hand, and this is an illegal activity. Can you write that illegal? <coughs> yeah, it's an illegal activity in which the person or the taxpayer deliberately avoids paying the true tax liability. Then you have what you call the tax resistance, eh? uh, like what you are facing currently. You fail to pay the tax because you don't like the government eh? or because you are opposing a given project to be undertaken by the government. That's what we call the tax resistance. Eh? Yeah, we're saying that it's a deliberate refusal to pay tax, either because of one conscience, for instance, because the taxpayer does not want to support the government or some of the activities because he feels strongly against such activities. So now let's look at anti-avoidance anti measures. And there are measures that prevent the tax reduction or reduction of tax liability by legal arrangement. They include, so there are three. One, we have shortfall distribution of dividends, regulation. Then number two, we have what we call the compensate uh, the capitalization rule. Then capitalization rule. And then number three, we have compensating tax measures. Now those are the very the major anti avoidance measures. Now let's start with the first one: uh, the shortfall distribution of dividends. Now companies are required to make the following distribution to the shareholders in form of dividend. Now you see, if the company makes a profit. For example, of 100 million. And then they decide to pay 20% of the retained, I mean, of the profit as dividend. So that means they pay 20 million. But now remember, when the company is paying dividend, they need to charge some tax at the source. That's what you call the withholding tax. Withholding tax. So the rest tax they pay, the rest withholding tax they, they pay. So the government came up with measures to minimize this. And the government came up with measures that of the profit after tax, of the total profit for the year, the company should distribute at least 40% of the profit after tax from the operating profit 
of the operating profit to the shareholders. And then in case there was any other non-operating income, such as investment income, rental income, you distribute everything to the shareholders. 100% of none operating profit. So that means you pay more uh, dividends to the shareholders. Since once you distribute to them, the government will get more tax in form of withholding tax. So what are those measures? So you think that companies are required to make the foreign distribution to the shareholders in form of dividends. Number one, at least 40% of the operating profit after tax. Number B, 100% of non-operating profit after tax. Now, companies may be exempted from such requirement in the foreign circumstances. Now, what are those circumstances of which now they are exempted from that? Number one, if the company is undertaking a capital project. Number two, when the company is servicing a loan. The company <laughs> is servicing a loan. But that now, this they don't consider because most of the company, they used to have a debt in the capital structure. In case it's a delivered firm, that means you not pay. So nowadays that one is not applicable. Then where the company is controlled by the government, directly or indirectly, and yeah, that means where the company has some shares or have some stake, it's not a mass they distribute that. They're exempted from that regulation. Then number four, when the company is in the process of merger as a predator. Yeah, whenever the company is in the process of merger and acquisition, as a predator, there is a lot of tax incentive uh, for them. And then number five, when the company has no liquid funds. And when the company has no liquid funds, that means the company can be profitable, but all the cash are still outstanding. They are unrealized. So in that case, you have nothing you can pay to the shareholders. So in that case, the company would be exempted. Now, if the company does not comply with this requirement, a shortfall distribution tax or a penalty of 5% is imposed on the undistributed profit. Can you cancel that? Of undis I mean, can you analyze that? 5% of and distributed profit, 5% of and distributed profit. Yeah, you see for a company, the holding tax is at the rate of 5%. Kwa hivyo ukilipa kidogo, pengine haujalipa, serikali inakujia tax yake, iyo 5%. Yenye uge held, kama ungi comply with this regulation of paying the full dividends. Now, let's do an illustration. December 2011, cost 25A. December 2011, post 25. December 27, question 5A. The four information related to Maji Mazuri Limited for the year ended that first of December 2010. So there is profit before tax, 100. This comprise of investment income of 10 million and operating income of 90 million. So the profit before tax, eh? The profit before tax was 100 million, which comprised 90 million from operating activities and 10 million was from investment income. Let's that again. That profit before tax was 100. This comprised investment income of 10 million. Remember, investment income is not an operating income. Eh? So that's an, an operating income. It's among the specified sources of income and operating income of 90. Number two. The balance of long-term loan was 50 million. I remember interest on that is a rubber expense. Yeah, the balance of long-term loan was five, uh, 50 million shillings with an interest rate of 10% per annum. That means they are supposed to claim an interest of how much? 10% of 50, you get an amount of 5 million. Only 40% of the interest on their own due for the year was charged in the determining the profit for the year, being the actual amount paid. So that means the interest on loan, it's 
of 50 million, that means to the income statement, they are supposed to claim all the 5 million as arable expense. But they only paid 40% of what they paid. That's what they charged the income st statement. So that means there is an item they never charged. So you raise, we are just, this was the profit before time. In determining the operating profit, they were supposed to deduct an interest of 5 million, but they only deducted 40% being the actual tax paid. You don't charge what you paid. You don't claim what you paid. You claim what you incurred during the year. Use their core basis. Eh? You raise interest on loan. So it's 10% of 50, of which you get an amount of five. But when determining this profit, they deducted only 40%. So that means they had a charge by 60%. An amount of how much? 60% you get three. And that's an operating expense. And then number three, capital allowances. Yes, you know capital allowance is arable expense, right? Yeah, so capital allowance is arable expense. Capital allowances provided for the income statement amounted to 4 million. Yeah, so they deducted 4 million in the income statement. However, the revenue authority has revised this amount downward to two. You had claimed way and tear of 4 million. But the revenue authority are telling you no. You're only supposed to claim how much? Two. So what do you adjust that? Oops. You add back of a charged capital allowance. You are supposed to claim two, but you claimed four. So in short, in determining this taxable profit, you are deducted four, but you know that you're only supposed to deduct two. So you add back two. Mm -hmm. Number four, the total dividend paid for the year amounted to 25 million. And the company is subject to corporate tax at the rate of 30% required. Shortfall distribution tax for the year. So first of all, now let's get the taxable profit. Taxable profit, you'll get 89. Yeah, you'll get 10. Then you raise tax. So is at the rate of 30%. Yeah, you get three. seven. So how much will be the profit after tax? This is for two point. So that's the profit after tax. Then we have minimum distribution. Minimum distribution. You say that from the operating income, they should distribute a minimum of 40%. From an operating income, they should distribute 100% of the profit after tax. So that means here they should distribute 7 million. What about this? Twenty-four point. Nine two. Yeah. So that means the total dividend payable or minimum dividend payable, they should twenty four point nine two plus seven. They should distribute an amount of that point nine two. Then you compare again it actual dividend paid. actual dividend paid. And you are told that in note number four, the total dividend paid for the year amounted to 25. They only paid 25. So therefore there is shortfall distribution. Shortfall distribution. An amount of how much? Six point? Yeah, nine two. How much will be the shortfall tax? We charge. 5% of 6.9. Sorry? 346, which is equivalent to 346. Now that means if you could have complied with the rules, the government could have recovered the holding tax of 346 uh, on top of that, on what you had distributed, on what we have withheld. Eh? Yeah, so in this case, the 5% of the dividend you never distributed, now the government will come for their tax in that scenario. Good. So open with me, May 2012, question 4B.
May 25th is your four week. But one, you know that justify the imposition of shortfall tax on company. You justify the imposition. Actually, that's what I was trying to explain here. Okay. Why do the company uh, impose that shortfall distribution of tax? So that in order to recover the tax that they could recover, they could have earned as a result of withholding tax if the company could have paid their total dividends. That's how you justify. And then you can also explain further on that, eh? that the company should distribute a minimum of 40% from the profit after tax and 100% of the profit after tax as dividends. But also you can also say that the company might be exempted from above, from the above regulation due to you show that. But the major uh, to justify is try to say, why do you charge that at 5%? It's in order to recover the, the holding tax that could have been recovered or could have been earned if the company could have dis uh, distributed all the dividend required. Part B of the question, part B of the question. In the year ended that first December 2010, Maripo Limited earned a profit before tax of 400 million from the main operation. The main operation, that means from operating activity. So we have what we call the operating activities and we have none operating activities. So we are told that in the end of that first of December 2011, Maripo Limited earned a profit before tax of 400 million from its main operation. So the profit before tax was 400. In addition, the company earned an investment income of 60 million. Investment income is not an operating income, it's an operating income. They earn an amount of 60. Then you are told that dividend paid to members for the year amounted to 98 million. The corporate tax rate is 30%. Required shortfall tax payable by the company for the year and that part of December 20. Yeah, that's very simple. Now, this was the profit after tax from the operating activities 400, non operating 60. You tax, how much is the tax rate? 30. So you get the profit after tax. You multiply by 0. 0. 0. 0.7 so that you get the profit after tax. Once you get the profit after tax, what you are concerned with is about the dividend they're supposed to distribute. From the operating profit, they should distribute at least 40% of the profit after tax. 40%. But from non operating activities, they distribute 100%. So, give me the dividend payable. One, twelve. Is that forty two? So, Minimum distribution, it'd be an amount of, is it 154? Then this minimum they should distribute. Then you compare this against the actual dividends. Actual dividend. Okay. During the day, they paid a dividend of how much? 19. So there was a shortfall distribution. <laughs> Amount of 56 million. So they never decide, they never distributed this 56. So for the government to, uh, to recover the holding tax now remaining with the company, that's how they charge the shortfall distribution tax. Shortfall distribution tax of 5%, which is equivalent to the withholding tax of 56. 
5.6 divided by 2, you get 2.8, right? 2.8 million. Let's see for us that. Eh? So that was all about shortfall distribution of dividend uh, regulation. Good. And then you also have what we call the in capitalization. So any question here? Or do the other one? You can look at that for one minute. So let's do the rest in the next class. So now we are only meaning now with bill capitalization and compensating tax. And then we'll discuss something to do with uh, tax planning eh? and other theories. And then also we'll revise a cut. Eh? Yeah, so I'm done with my syllabus once we are done with that.